It's the word everyone in the Piedmont is talking about. Could we see snow by Monday? Temperatures are already dropping. Some neighborhoods could get one to two inches. Other areas just dustings. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Alex Rose and I'm Danny Harnden. Daylight saving time is tomorrow, but we are not out of wintry weather just mm -hmm. yet. Meteorologist Charles Ewing is tracking the system right now. Charles, a lot of people still want to know, will it snow? Hey guys, yeah, I think on our Monday, we will have a pretty decent chance for seeing some wintry precipitation across the area, mainly a snow sleet mixture. But for now, our radar is showing us mainly just some cloudy skies with some light drizzle here and there across the southern parts of the viewing area, like around Davidson County, back into Randolph County. But as we head back to the west, we're watching a couple of pieces of energy here. One little spin up there in Nebraska, another low pressure system right here near Texas and Oklahoma. You see this band of strong thunderstorms now firing up across Mississippi back into Arkansas, not expecting any severe weather here in the Piedmont, but you see some of the players here. This would get together, create one storm system, and that one storm system will bring us a chance for some wintry weather on our Monday. Future clouds and radar showing us scattered rain showers for tonight going into our Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. But as we head into our very early Monday morning, you begin to see some blue popping up across Virginia. This is where the cold air is at, and this cold air will continue to slide down to the south. That's when our rain will change over to a wintry mix of snow and sleet. So how much snow and sleet can we expect? Well, a little bit later on, I'll let you know but it looks like most of the snow will fall in our mountains. More about our forecast a little bit later. Looking forward to that, Charles. Thank you. An eighth grade student from Wilkes County is in the hospital tonight after he was hit by a bus while, while on a school field trip. The 14 year old was pinned under that bus. The class from Central Wilkes Middle School was in Washington, D.C. when Hunter Brown was hit. Fox 8's Michael Parlarci spoke to the family's pastor before he headed up to Washington, D.C. to be by Hunter's side. Michael? Danny Pastor Richard Cardwell immediately left to Washington, D.C. the second after we spoke here at the church earlier today. Now he's been in constant contact with the family, and he says what they need right now are a lot of prayers. <laughs> Every second counts for emergency crews using hydraulic lifts to pull this tour bus off a of 14 year old Hunter Brown. Every word was crucial to help save his life. United States Park Police in Washington, D.C. says Brown was crossing the street last night in front of the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial when it happened. A tragic scene of Brown pinned under the bus on the minds tonight of his classmates at Central Wilkes Middle School. We were there when students got back to Wilkes County this afternoon. Parents were anxious to console their child with a hug. Very, very sad, very disheartening. Fishing Baptist Creek pastor Richard Cardwell is ready to do the same. We need your prayers to help us as we lift him up to the Lord tonight. Cardwell is Hunter's pastor. He made the six hour journey to be by the family side at the hospital. We're all just broken hearted for the family. Cardwell has one focus for the family when he gets there. Keep their faith strong. He says this goes for anyone else who's close to Hunter and his family. The pastor reflects on one of his favorite Bible scriptures for strength and courage. Really the one I'm holding on to is Isaiah 9, 7. The Bible says that by his stripes you are healed. Now Cardwell also told me that Hunter is breathing on his own, but is still using a ventilator at this time. Now he says that Hunter's stable condition is hopeful for a CT scan on his brain soon. Danny, Alex. Good deal, Michael Polarchi live in Wilkes County. Thank you, Michael. Well, big changes in Forsyth County today. Many drivers forced to find a detour or on I-40 in Winston-Salem. As of last night, NCDOT crews shut down that area to tear down the 4th Street Bridge. Business 40 will be closed in both directions between Cloverdale Avenue and Peters Creek Parkway through tomorrow. But the bridge will remain closed until 2019. The ACC men's basketball tournament may not be in Greensboro this year, but this weekend the Coliseum is busier than ever. Traffic tonight will be an issue with several events going on. Right now, Blake Shelton is playing at a sold out concert. And the Greensboro Swarm also playing just next door. This is usually a busy weekend around the Gate City, but for a second year in a row, the ACC tournament was up in New York. But it's not stopping Greensboro from bringing in big money to our area. First and foremost, Blake Shelton in concert. 
Um, we have a big crowd coming. We've encouraged people to arrive early. We've got a Greensboro Swarm game. We've got a swim meet. We've got a roller derby. And we have a talent competition as well as a large meeting uh, on the property. So it's a big night in the community. Yeah, the list goes on and take a look at this before Blake Shelton's big concert tonight. He and his girlfriend Gwen Stefani stepping by the Wrangler pop up shop in downtown. How cool is that? All right, once the Salem firefighters busy overnight responding to this house fire. It happened on the 3800 block of Sheridan Street. Firefighters say the house was vacant and no one was injured. Investigators are trying to figure out what caused that house fire. Well, it's safe to say you don't see this every day on the road and definitely not on the side of I-40. Today, drivers probably doing a double take because they saw a naked man running on the highway. This happened in Kernersville between Highway 66 and Union Cross Road. You can see it really slowed down traffic in that area. Highway Patrol was called to the scene. The man was transported and traffic is back to normal. Potentially dangerous chemicals in your drinking water? Well, the News & Record is reporting Greensboro's Water Resources Department believes pollutants are coming from an area near Piedmont Triad International Airport. Firefighters use a synthetic foam during training in that area, and some officials believe chemicals from that foam are ending up in the drinking water. They're doing more analysis right now, but the department says the water is still safe to drink. Next week, students and teachers will march out of the classroom to raise awareness for gun violence. But students right here in Greensboro already getting ready for the nationwide event. Today, students gathered to make signs ahead of the walkout next week. Many of them plan to walk out of class on March 14th. The event coming to light after the recent school shooting in Parkland, Florida. Students we talk to say it's a cause for all ages. We're seeing people of all ages. I mean, we had a three-year-old probably made a better sign than I did. Uh, but, you know, our organizers range from 14 years old to, uh, you know, 18 years old. We have, uh, you know, students from all across the triad, all different walks of life. But we've made it clear that the march is open to everybody. Several schools across the Piedmont will be taking part in the March for Our Lives event next week. Well, it's that time of year again. Whether you love it or hate it, remember to turn your clocks back one hour. Tomorrow will be springing forward. That means you're going to lose one hour of sleep tonight, but you get another hour of sunlight moving forward. So I'll take the trade off. Firefighters say when you spring forward tonight, don't forget change your smoke detector batteries. According to the National Fire Protection Association, between 2009 and 2013, 60% of home fire deaths happened in homes that either did not have smoke alarms or alarms that did not work. It was a place to help veterans with extreme cases of PTSD. Tonight, we're learning new information about the man who police say shot and killed three women who worked at a California veterans facility. Plus, it was one of the most publicized murder trials in U.S. history, but now the O.J. Simpson case is in the spotlight yet again. Did O.J. Simpson just confess to killing his wife, Nicole? And for today, we had a few rain showers across our area. Now for your Monday afternoon around lunchtime, we could be looking at this, a mixture of snow and sleet across the region. How much snow and sleet could we see? Details at Fox 810 o'clock news continues.